Hey, what's going on guys, it's Kyle Watts. So today I came down to visit Paul Feinberg and we're gonna check out the Sony ZV-1 on the brand new Zhiyun Crane M3 gimbal. I'm gonna just spoil the video for you guys right now. This is the best setup you can possibly get as a gimbal for the Sony ZV-1. And today we're gonna tell you why. So currently we are shooting on the A7S III with the Crane M3. So this gimbal is very capable of holding heavy payloads which is a really nice feature because you can actually future-proof your setup with this gimbal as well. So if you guys are starting on a Sony ZV-1 and you want to eventually want to get to like an a7 III or whatever, bigger camera setup, you can still use this gimbal and not have to sell it, which is pretty much can't do with any other lighter gimbal setup because most gimbal setups are meant for one specific size camera and they will not work with the others. So that whole intro you saw was actually the ZV-1 on the Crane M3 we clearly didn't actually travel the whole world. That was at Epcot in Florida, Disney's Epcot. Uh, but it was a good place to go and it's a place that people like to bring cameras and stuff. So we figured it'd be fun to shoot there. Okay, so first let's just talk about this gimbal itself. So the Crane M3 is probably the lightest gimbal I've ever owned. This thing is very light. Pretty much it's about as light as just like a handheld tripod. Uh, it's very compact. You can still put a handle on the bottom if you want it to be a longer extension. But this thing is kind of the perfect pair for the ZV-1 or other APS-C cameras like the A6400 or the ZV-E10. Uh, but it can also hold your iPhones all the way up to a full frame camera that weighs more, still with compact lenses. But this thing is absolutely the perfect pairing for things like the Sony ZV-1, uh, as that's kind of what this was originally made for. So the earlier generation was the Crane M2, and that was meant specifically for the ZV-1. Uh, this thing's no different, but the motors on this thing are quite a bit stronger. So if you want to put a microphone on top of the camera, or if you want to put that wide angle lens on the front, you really don't have to rebalance it. You probably should, but, but the motors are strong enough to where it'll just hold everything fine without having to rebalance. Now, what I really like about this is it's just so compact and it's easy to walk around with. It's not big. And people don't stare at you when you're walking around, especially when you're shooting on the ZV-1. When I walk around vlogging with my big Joby tripod and my full frame camera, people just tend to stare at you. So I think this is a very good combo with this camera. Uh, and you can actually turn active stabilization off on the camera when you're using the gimbal because you don't need any of that extra stabilization in camera when you're on a gimbal. So this gimbal does have a few different modes. It does have pan follow, which only goes left and right. It has follow, which will go up and down. It'll have POV, which will move with any which way you move the gimbal. It has that vertex mode, which kind of spins. Uh, I use a lot of that in that montage. And then it has a lot of different settings where you can do auto calibration. So it'll kind of vibrate the camera and it'll get it set to the right balance. I would recommend if you use this though to turn the motor torque to low in settings because it'll handle this camera a little better. But I think this is kind of my like favorite little go-to rig for when you want to travel small, travel light. And that's really what the ZV-1 is good for as well. So the other cool thing with this gimbal is it does have a little built-in light on the front. If you see when I turn it on, uh, it goes from 10% to 100% and you can also change the color temperature depending on the environment you're at. Uh, so this thing will be really nice for when you're shooting at night and you just want to turn that to yourself and get just that little bit extra light on your face. Um, or if your camera's just too dark, like the ZV-1 is not the greatest low light camera. So having that light at nighttime is kind of a little bit of a help as well. So on this gimbal, you can hold it upright or you can actually hold it in like an underslung mode and then you can do low angle shots. Uh, and if you tap the button on the front three times, it'll put it into a selfie mode. So now you can walk around and you can vlog really easy without having to take your hand off the grip. Um, I currently actually put this little small rig adapter on the side for a cold shoe. So if you want to put your mic there instead and then have it connect to the camera, you can do that. So with this gimbal, you do get a bunch of connection cables where you can connect it straight from the gimbal to the camera and you can control the camera's record button with this. Uh, personally, I actually like not using it because I like having the camera as far over as possible to keep it compact. And I just feel like I can hit the record button. But if you do want to connect it, there are a set of cables you can connect the camera to the gimbal to control it that way. So one other benefit of the connection cable is you can actually use it to charge the battery on your camera. You do have to go into your settings and turn on power with USB, but it allows the batteries from this to actually charge your camera because the ZV-1 batteries aren't that great. And this thing lasts about eight hours. So this gimbal is a little bit on the pricey side. It does start at $349 for the basic kit. And it does have a pro kit, which comes with like a microphone and a bunch of other stuff that you probably won't need necessarily. So uh, this one comes at $349. You do get the little tripod extension that you can put on the bottom. And I know this is an expensive gimbal but like I said before it is a very future-proof gimbal because you can use this with other setups that you might upgrade to in the future 
So I've been using this gimbal for about a month now and I've used them on several different cameras. And I have to say that the ZV-1 has been my favorite camera to use with this gimbal just because of its ease of use. And it just feels like it's made for this gimbal. One thing I really like about this though is that a lot of times when you zoom in on this camera and try to move around, it doesn't look good. It always gets really shaky and kind of just bad. But when it's on the gimbal, you can zoom in to 70 and fix on an object and then kind of have some movement with the gimbal and it looks awesome. And in that intro, I did a lot of shots at 70 millimeters on this gimbal and I think it just has a really cool look with the compression this camera can do. Uh, and it just gives you a different look other than that open 24 millimeter look all the time. But let's go check this thing out. Let's just walk around with this a little bit and see what this camera looks like when you're walking around and vlogging with it. Okay, so now we're on the Sony ZV-1 on the gimbal and we're just gonna walk around a little bit and you can see it, it looks really steady. Uh, active stabilization has been turned off on the camera because you don't need that when you're on a gimbal. It actually will make it look kind of weird if you use it. Uh, but we're just gonna walk around and you can kind of swing around different angles. You can see that the gimbal reacts quite well and this is a good focal length. Uh, if I add on this little tripod extension to the bottom, now with this tripod extension on the bottom, you can actually get a little bit further away from you and expose a little bit more of the background, which is kind of nice. Uh, and if you want to throw on that little wide angle lens, you can actually do that too from your Lansy. We'll make this lens look a little bit wider uh, and the gimbal holds that just fine as well. So we're just gonna turn around and we're gonna just kind of give it a quick little walking test. Hey Paul, thanks for filming my B-roll. So if you haven't checked out his channel, go check out his channel, Paul Feinberg. Uh, so anyways, let's just kind of give it a quick walking test. And I'm walking really fast now, so you can see this gimbal is very smooth for this camera. And uh, there's actually a really cool bird here. Should we try to get that too? Okay, so I feel like no gimbal test is ever complete until you do that running test. I don't know why we do running tests on gimbals because no one ever runs while using a gimbal really. I guess maybe it just showcases like the ultimate amount of stabilization and see how it goes. So I'm gonna run full speed with a backpack. This is gonna be kind of, <laughs> be kind of funny, I think. Ready, here we go. Okay. That last part might got a little shaky because I think I moved my arm up and down a little bit. But I don't know. You could tell me if that looks good. I'll have to go home and wait until we watch this. Hey, that bird came back out again. There's this bird we're trying to find. And it keeps popping out and then going hiding and then coming back out. One other feature that I really like about this gimbal that I didn't mention already yet, because it's so compact, it's really easy to put in a camera bag. It fits in most sections of bags that you can't put gimbals in. So realistically, this thing doesn't take up hardly any more space than just having like a handheld tripod. So that's making this thing the perfect traveling pair for this camera. So you can get these just really awesome smooth shots where you're not shaky and it looks gross. So it's just got really sunny outside. So because it's Florida, now the sun is just starting to come up even though it hasn't been all weekend. This gimbal, if you're trying to shoot with two people, it's really easy to get someone in the frame, kind of hold it on them. I personally really like this. I've, I've done this camera a lot with travel vlogging and it's always been kind of just shaky. It's not the greatest, but it's been good enough. But having this gimbal now is making this thing just really easy to walk around with. It's small and you can just throw it in your backpack and it's really easy to pack and travel with, so. Very light. Yep. Yeah, as far as holding this thing in with weight wise, uh, having this camera on this gimbal makes it almost feel like a gimbal without any camera on it because this gimbal and the camera are super light. So that is why one of my favorite reasons why I like this camera on this gimbal setup the most. And also you can do really cool shots like this with feet because you can get really low to the ground. And if you're looking to do those orbit shots, it's quite easy to do with people walking even at full speeds. Okay, so I have to get back to the pool because the sun's only gonna be out for a little bit longer. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video with the ZV-1 and the Crane M3. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I'll get back to you. As always, hit that subscribe button, follow along to this channel. And thank you for watching. Guys, catch you later. Bye.